No, okay. And uh, welcome back. Thank you for staying with us on Monday Special. As we told you, today it's all about land. Yes, the commodity we just can't get enough of. And I want to start by introducing my guests to you. And then we'll get straight into your questions. And thank you so much for sending them in. Um, to the far right is Kuala Munyao Kayugera. She is a corporate commercial and conveyancing advocate. Next to her is Paul Ndongo, who was the chair of the 2003 Commission of Inquiry into illegal irregular land uh, location um, for public land in particular it came to be known as the famed ndongo commission and to my left is dr mwenda makathimo he is a land economist will be joined very shortly uh, via skype by odenda lumumba who is uh, the kenya from the kenya land alliance he'll be speaking to us live from dar es salaam tanzania and a little later Saiton investment senior manager for the regional market johnson denge talking about the numbers when it comes to to land but let's start by taking a look at what you are asking us tonight can you clarify what the law says about the smallest size one can acquire a title deed for because someone says that it's only an eighth uh, what about those with lesser land what documentation should they have is is there any provision in law that that restricts the size of land that one can own well, uh, the thank you for having me. The Constitution env envisages that a law will be put in place to set the limit, as in the minimum and the maximum size of acreage that one can own, but that land is not in place yet. Mm -hmm. So you have plots as small as 40 by 80. Mm -hmm. You have uh, eights, which are like the acceptable minimum, mm -hmm. uh, but then you have no maximum limit in as to how much land one can own. Okay. Yes. Uh, and um, there's no minimum either yet by law? Not yet. There all is, right. there is a, sorry, Anne, there is the, all, the, the planning regulations mm -hmm. and the zoning mm -hmm. under the old law mm -hmm. uh, where each, each town or each jurisdiction of planning is governed by the, plan, the zoning regulations for that area. Right. Mm -hmm. So there are what we call minimum plot sizes like in Nairobi, mm -hmm. depending on zones, mm -hmm. like uh, Lavington has different, Runda has different, um, uh, East Lands, uh, Buburu have different, and in the rural areas, uh, they are defined uh, by the land control boards, mm -hmm. and uh, also in some areas, they are defined by what we call the carrying capacity, okay. if it's like ranching. So you find them uh, separated, they are not codified, but they are uh, depending on the planning regulations of the, either the county government, of the municipality, or uh, uh, the, any town planning authority. All right, so that is yeah. not, a f it's not fixed, it, it uh, varies depending they, on the area. And they give for those, that local area. If you go apply for development, mm -hmm. the local area, the planner for the local area, mm -hmm. say the county government mm -hmm. or the town, uh, mun the, the municipality will give you the minimum sizes and plot ratios for that area. All right, let's uh, take another question now. Are there charges to the land search and how do you know the worth of uh, ap or appreciation of the land you're buying? Uh, you're well, the economist. <laughs> yes, well, the, 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 it, previously there were gazetted uh, charges for different services in the land sector which were given by the Ministry of Lands, but there was uh, a suspension of fees for uh, charges that was done uh, by the previous CS. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as far as I know, there has been that suspension for land uh, search uh, uh, that was given. But of course, uh, times times can change. I don't know if that has been revoked or not. But the previous one was uh, the, the, pre the previous announcement by the former CS was that they had, that they had stopped uh, uh, charging, charging such uh, such fees. But uh, my colleagues. Have Scholar, you can confirm it. that? Yes, yes, I can confirm that uh, currently we are not paying uh, land, land search fees for okay. purposes of getting searches at the registries. Okay, so mm. no search fees. And because we want this to be as informative as possible, please do keep sending in your questions and we'll get our expert panel to respond. Um, but if you would kick us off, um, Paul, how has our historical relationship with land um, affected or driven the desire to own land? Uh, thank you, Anne, first of all, for inviting me. Uh, when you look at land in a historical perspective, uh, in spite of all the efforts that uh, have 
purported to be made, uh, it's still a mess, a big mess. Mm -hmm. uh, I say that primarily because uh, as a country we have refused to address the land problem holistically and realistically. Because if you go back to independence, you would have expected that uh, the first agenda for the independent government would have been to look at the land question. Because after all, the uh, fight for the independence of this country was about land. Mm -hmm. So you would have expected they would look at that, they would repeal all the statutes which had been uh, in place put by the colonial authority to serve their interests. Uh, but they didn't do any of that. What they did is simply to amend the colonial statutes, very superficially indeed, such that where the colonial uh, registration talked about the monarch or the queen or the king, they deleted that and put president. So that uh, the president of the country ended up having the same uh, authorities as the colonial rulers had in terms of uh, allocating land. Mm -hmm. And that remained the position until the, the, those laws were repealed in 2012 by the, the new land acts. Uh, of course, that situation, uh, as you know, led to all manner of irregularities. And that is eventually what led to the establishment of the Commission on the Illegal and uh, Irregular Allocations of Public Land, which we, I had the uh, misfortune or fortune of <laughs> sharing. Right. Uh, but even there, after giving in the report, mm -hmm. that report is still somewhere in a cupboard. Okay. Uh, it hasn't been implemented. So um, the the lack of speedy reform of uh, you know post colonial um, land laws is what has led to our current predicament, is what you're saying. And how has that uh, maybe influenced uh, you know the Kenyan desire to own land? Almost everybody in Kenya believes to have made it or to be secure to you know in some reasonable way that you must right. own a mm -hmm. parcel of land, and that's not necessarily true um, even just you know across the border. So. Do you think that history affects well, our perspective? Well, you see, in, in my view, that is one, uh, you know, one issue that should have been addressed simultaneously with the, the issues I just referred mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. In the sense that there is this obsession, as you rightly say, by Kenyans of wanting to own land. But you see, the, 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 the fact is, we don't have enough land and we are never going to have enough. Mm -hmm. The geographical area of this country is about 582,000 square kilometers. 80 percent of that is either desert or semi-desert. Mm -hmm. So it's not of much use in terms of agricultural and, you know, residential use. 20 percent, which is the balance, you then take out the land occupied by forests, by lakes, by rivers, by roads, mm -hmm. you know, all those sort of facilities mm -hmm. which take about 3-4%. So that as a country we are then left with about 15-16% of the land mass that we can settle on and we can make use of. So that with this, uh, you know, urge for of everybody wanting to own a piece of land, it's not going to happen. Okay. Um, joining us now on phone is uh, Saiton Investments uh, Senior Manager for the Regional Market, Johnson Denge. Johnson, good evening and thank you for joining us. Uh, what is your own perspective in terms of the popularity of land as an investment uh, in Kenya vis-a-vis -vis the region? Good, uh, good evening. Thank you for having me on the show. Uh, I think, uh, as Ndungu uh, says, is that uh, land, there is a lot of pressure, a major factor of uh, production. 
and such is also subjected to forces of demand and supply. Looking at the numbers, as we say, around 582, to be precise, 582, 650 kilometers square is uh, our land size, with about 2% occupied by water, another about 2% occupied by forest and other key services, leaving about 16% to of where arable land. And interestingly, over 75% of the population occupy this uh, 20, uh, 16% of what remains as arable. Uh, looking at uh, figures because of the demand and the supply, you find that, for instance, just in Nairobi metropolitan area alone, uh, land has been growing uh, with uh, about a kega of about 19.4% in the last six years. Telling you uh, there is a price increase of about 2.5 uh, since in, so in the last six years uh, on figures that were there, let's say 2012. So a lot of pressure and right. everybody was on it because it also uh, plays a sacred uh, aspect or it has an emotive way uh, or uh, uh, intrinsic emotive intrinsic value in uh, the population. All right, Johnson, you've just talked about the numbers, so we just want to actually, and since you, you gave us Nairobi, let's just uh, zoom in on that, uh, looking at the land price index um, for Nairobi County and its environs. We're just going to play that on the screen for the benefit of our viewers in terms of uh, the numbers that you've been talking about. Um, so those are what prices look like right now in uh, different suburbs. And I've got to say... Um, it looks a little bit ridiculous, Johnson. Uh, one of the questions that had been asked earlier is how does one know the worth of the land, the actual worth of land and how much it is expected to appreciate uh, by? Can you answer that for our viewers? Yeah, there are several ways of looking at uh, land value. Unfortunately, in this market, we rely more on a, a comparable method. Just looking at what are historically or what other people have bought land from and trying to 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 equate maybe to the next land uh, if somebody x bought last month at 10 million for instance then the next land is likely to be this a more precise way will be uh, a method called land residue method which more look at uh, the highest and the best use of uh, a given piece of land for instance land has competing uses if it's an agricultural land, then you look at if I had to do an agricultural activity on a specific land, then what is my return? The moving on issues like uh, taxes and the other overhead, putting in issues to do with your profits, then what remains and the cost of actually establishing the activity you're doing there, that what, what remains should be the true value of that land. But because of other factors, including utilities, use, yeah, because, again, we don't have a fixed use of land in this market. Looking at other things like, uh, as I said earlier, the supply and demand, speculation, which is also moving prices, then we are more uh, approximating our value of land through uh, comparables, just looking at what somebody bought the other side and uh, uh, putting into the, or calculating it to the land, in, uh, the subject land. So, if we can be able as a, uh, a society to try and use the highest and best use, looking at the competing uses depending on the location of where the land is, mm -hmm. then we are likely to get a, a better value for the land. But for now, it's also being subjected to uh, demand and supply. Mm -hmm. So it's more a willing buyer, willing seller, and unfortunately, not most uh, most of us are not able to afford uh, certain areas. All right. Um just before I let you go, um, how does land as an investment perform against other investment options? Uh, quite very high. If you look at uh, land alone, as I said earlier, in Nairobi alone in the last six years, a compounded uh, growth rate of about 19.4%. Uh, if you compare that to bonds, which did an average of uh, about 14.2%, if you look at... Uh, uh, other, other, other investment uh, classes, mainly because we look at the bond money market, which is also lower than that, then it becomes one of the highest uh, investment classes, especially for this market. All right. Thanks for your perspective, Johnson from Cyton speaking to us. Um, so, you know, land tends to be 
because of the factors that you talked about, Paul, even in terms of our reform process, that is perhaps not as speedy as we would have hoped. It mm -hmm. tends to be subject um, to a lot of graft uh, and foster corruption. So the new lands, yes, uh, moved fairly speedily to digitize or to further digitize um, the process through the lands information management system. We saw LSK oppose that at some point um, as an omnibus kind of solution and now they have reached a new compromise uh, position. Um, Moenda, tell us a little bit about that and how has that affected the way in which um, one can purchase or manage land? Is it sufficiently easier now? Well, I, I must say that um, as a background, we, this country, we, the paper-based land information system has led to very high corruption and created gaps uh, that have been exploited by fraudsters. And also, um, it has also created room for rent-seeking within the ministry by the officials mm -hmm. and has been very bureaucratic. So from a policy perspective, Kenyans agreed uh, via the national land policy and the various law reforms to have an automated electronic uh, land information management system and land administration system. And the efforts that have been done by the ministry, uh, unfortunately, have been piecemeal and hard hoc. And what the, the, the leadership has as, as lacked is all of them have, even the previous regimes, have assumed that automating land information system is scanning of documents. And it is not. It is the management of the entire relational databases, from surveying to planning to getting to all, of all the conveyancing instruments secured and done in a manner that is gives security and where professionals have confidence and special user i mean uh, special rights to the system so that not everybody accesses registration mm -hmm. but the ones who are authorized say lawyers not everybody does surveying not everybody does planning mm -hmm. and that way then one would be assured of getting information in a reliable and secure manner mm -hmm. is uh, unfortunately what we've been wit witnessing is uh, the newspaper notices that like that were given the other day which have not involved um, the stakeholders consultations to give the real processes of land administration good foundation and anchoring so that whatever is automated doesn't become prone to the same problems that have, have been so good effort at sorting the preliminaries mm -hmm. by the CSEs that are passed like scanning documents and all that but digitization is more of the entire integrated process so we would want to see a more um, project oriented mm -hmm. that covers every aspect and brings in all the stakeholders and brings a system that is efficient secure and reliable Odenda Lumumba of the Kenya Land Alliance joins us uh, live from Dar es Salaam, Tanzania via Skype. And good evening to you. I'll pose the same question to you. Um, we're seeing even more movement. Um, I think the previous land CS had begun this process. The current uh, CS has uh, taken it a step forward, if you like, in consultation now with LSK. They have a harmonized position on how, uh, you know, how much of this can be done digitally and what needs to be done manually. I, to your mind, does this significantly ease land management and also you know get rid of loopholes for corruption uh, good evening viewers uh, i think and uh, first and foremost uh, we must appreciate that uh, land reform was about transformation of the land systems and therefore moving away from manual analog arrangement to digital was the best way to move however we must really uh, say that the ministry of lands has clearly failed to involve all stakeholders in this process. And uh, given the fact that uh, uh, the new governance is supposed to be participatory, uh, and it has brought in new, more stakeholders. For instance, when you look at how you deal with uh, leases, we now have the ministry, we have National Land Commission, we have county government and the very people who are seeking leases uh, as investors or for settlers or any other uses that they can put with. So the fact that uh, one stakeholder, like the, the Law Society of Kenya, having raised a fundamental question of how that process was being uh, 
uh, channeled out, I think it was, it was not really healthy for the ministry to enter into an undertaking just with one stakeholder, and we are not even sure what they really entered into, because uh, LSK was basically uh, talking about uh, illegality in the manner in which uh, digital digitalization had been rolled out, which was a bitter cake uh, in, in the broader perspective. But all of a sudden, without knowing behind the doors, they said they have now agreed. That does not occur very well, given that the ministry had just been uh, systems, procedures, policies, had just been reviewed and been seen susceptible to being corrupt. So my only major concern is that uh, the failure to involve uh, other stakeholders does not really move uh, over well. Right. Digitalization is the way to go. Mm -hmm. We have no option about it. <clears throat> and, and I think we just have to learn to uh, catch up with it if we are still backward. All right, Odenda, uh, we hear you uh, more consultation uh, in the process. Um, hold the line. We'll, we'll get back to you. Um, but, Scholar, if you could. So, somebody uh, decides that they want to invest in land. Straight off the bat, what should be their first consideration? Thank you, Anne. Now, assuming that they have already identified the land, mm -hmm. well, that is the first step. Mm -hmm. You must see what it is that you're investing in. Mm -hmm. Once you have identified that land, then the next thing that you ought to do is to investigate the title to that land mm -hmm. to make sure that the person purporting to be the owner of the land is actually the owner of that land. Mm -hmm. Right. So what you will need to do, most of the processes will entail going out to the registries, to the surveys of Kenya. So there are things that you know, you may not want to bother yourself with because there are professionals that are tasked and are well equipped to deal with this uh, kind of processes. So once you have identified the land, then give instructions to a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Ask the seller to give you a copy of the title. With that, the lawyer will be able to conduct a search on that property. Mm -hmm. uh, a surveyor comes in very handy, Mr. Uh, Dr. Makadima will confirm that they will need to establish that the ground position of this property is actually what you have been shown because at times we've, we've had cases where somebody was shown a different kind of uh, mm. property in a different location, that when in actual sense that the paper that they have relates to a very different property. So a surveyor will help you to locate that exact property to confirm that the title that you have and the land on the, pos on the ground are the same, mm -hmm. right? So once you have uh, gotten a confirmation on the, the property mm -hmm. on the ground and the ownership is verified that X as shown on this title document, is actually the owner as per the land records, then uh, the next thing, of course, that you may want to proceed uh, is valuation of that property. You know, somebody may be asking for 50 million mm -hmm. for a property that is not worth half of that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the purchase amount. price that right. they're asking for. Mm -hmm. So again, that is very critical. I get wary when people come to us and they say, we've already paid a deposit on this property mm. before they undertake any of those processes. Mm. So yes, mm -hmm. uh, it will be a very critical at that point in time. Once ownership is confirmed, you're comfortable with the price, it all goes well with the market, then to have a sale agreement drawn by the lawyer. Mm -hmm. And this is part of the processes that uh, we had a problem with when uh, the ministry came out and said, you can do everything digitally. You will need someone to authenticate that the person purporting to sell is actually who they purport to be, right? So sale agreement will be drawn. In there will be all the terms that are pertinent to this transaction, including how much is to be paid, how much is the deposit payable, how is it to be paid, at what point is it to be paid, who holds the money pending the successful transfer of this property. So very critical terms that must be agreed upon and set out in the sale agreement. All right. Yes. Um, Paul, what does one need to know about the, the land that they are purchasing, especially in an environment where, um, like you've rightly said, I mean, there remain a lot of disputes around land, you know, community lands, etc. What does one need to know about, you know, the the nature of the, the use and the previous, you know, hold of the land before buying? Well, and uh, thank you. May I, may I just comment briefly on the issue of what the ministry is doing now before I come to that? Briefly. Uh, you know, like my two colleagues uh, mentioned, there is total lack of uh, involvement of the all the stakeholders. But what concerns me even more 
is the fact that the legal framework for doing what they are trying to do doesn't appear to be there because the laws governing land should be amended to move the process from analog to to digital mm -hmm. uh, as far as i know the the the, the, the even the regulations to govern the operationalization of these statutes, although they were done mm -hmm. way back in uh, 2012, the regulations have never been put in place. And in fact, there was a court case last year, I think, oh, which uh, said that all the titles which were issued without uh, the, 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 those regulations being in place are invalid. Mm -hmm. But the ministry was given a time frame to, to put those regulations. At the moment, the regulations are still lying in Parliament. So that for me, the ministry is like putting the cart before the horse. You must put the regulations in place before you then move over to, to, to digitization. Okay. There is reference in the, in the ministry's uh, uh, notice today in the newspaper that uh, they had met with the Law Society president and agreed and so on and so on but what i find very odd and strange is that uh, the 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 president of the law society wrote to the ministry on thursday last week the fifth mm -hmm. and on the sixth the following day they had a meeting with the cs that's not and moving with speed that's <laughs> <laughs> i mean i don't know it it's, have been it's, uh, but, I, but I, I hear you i hear you all the points that you have raised in, in that respect and just purely because we are we're time bound mm -hmm. i don't want to uh if you would like uh beat that um any further you've mm -hmm. all talked about more consultation being necessary mm -hmm. and and also you've talked about the the requisite uh laws so let that be as it may if you would uh, now to my question the, the, I think the question... The uh, prior ownership of the land. The prior ownership is, is, uh, is related to what my colleague here was saying. Doing your searches and doing your... It's not even just searches. It is what we call due diligence. Mm -hmm. You not only got to search the title that Mr. Makathimo may be holding and establish that he is actually the registered owner. Mm -hmm. In my view, you got to go back and find out mm -hmm. who was the owner before him, who was the owner before that, who was the... And you got to... Because when these plots are created out of subdivisions, mm -hmm. you really got to go back very far and establish. You even have probably at times got to go physically on the ground and talk to neighbors, find out, does Mr. Makathimo own a piece of land here? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's much more than just looking at the at the land office records. But that sounds very complex. How does, uh, you know, an, an ordinary Kenyan who, ju who just wants to buy a kashamba, <laughs> you know, go past, uh, possibly two owners is, is possible. It, it may be complicated yeah. done, but, but you is. see, mm -hmm. unless you do that, mm -hmm. you could end up with a piece of paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, a piece of ground which probably belongs to somebody else. Mm -hmm. There have been many of these cases. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 uh, these are the kind of problems that the ministry should be looking at in it, with a view to making the process simpler and cheaper for the ordinary Kenyan. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, I don't see any alternative. All right. Uh, quickly, uh, Mwenda, the role of the county government, uh, the Land Commission, and the ministry in uh, when you want to purchase land? Yeah. In fact, if you want to purchase land, you have to check the planning regulations mm -hmm. because you must make sure that whatever land you're purchase, purchasing uh, fits the purpose that you want to use it for. Mm -hmm. Some areas are zoned as forests. Others are zoned right. as roads, mm -hmm. others are residential. So you must check with the county government the planned use for your local area. Mm -hmm. For National Land Commission, you check with them what is public land so that you are not sold for public land mm -hmm. in the name of private land. land. Mm -hmm. And then uh, um, the, uh, ministry. the ministry, you have to check the, the, the documents if they fit um, or if they are authentic. Uh, as, as, as Paul has said, mm -hmm. and if they are genuine, and if somebody has a, has a proper title and, and get the necessary con, um, uh, consent. The ministry actually 
and these institutions kind of should kind of indemnify you mm. as the purchaser from uh, the insecurity or the risks that exist uh, for, uh, when you do not uh, consult them, where you can buy something that is regularly acquired mm -hmm. or a grabbed piece of land or uh, one reserve for a forest and you're told you can do a school there mm -hmm. and you find you can't get consent. So that's the role of those institutions and that's why you must get their approvals and don't jump any. And go, don't go for shortcuts. Right. Get the official approvals. Each and every single yes. one. Yes, because it is more costly to lose your millions, right. your hard-hand savings, than to just pay a proper professional, not the quacks, a proper professional. Odenta, there is, um, you know, this growing trend of, of uh, especially for uh, those who, has, who have a little bit more spending power to purchase land, you know, outside of uh, built-up cities, you know, out in, in counties where there's, there appears to be a lot of land available. And yet at the same time on the news, we are ever reporting about, you know, land disputes, you know, small communities fighting uh, for their lands, uh, if you like, um, people claiming that they have been moved out of these lands, uh, disputing the ownership of uh, ranchers and so on. How can one be sure that they're not falling into such a trap? Yeah, I, I think uh, we must basically uh, tighten up our systems. Uh, there's a lot of uh, intransparency and accountability in the way we run our, our things. Uh, the communities don't just uh, uh, enjoy disputes, neither do they live by disputes. I think what, what happens is that they are taken for granted. And in the whole process, uh, people end up, uh, even when they go to the communities, more or less like they want to defraud them of, of their, their spaces. So I think the, the, the most important thing that uh, we need to regularize uh, spaces that community utilize so that uh, the, the community spaces must also join the marketplace from the front door, not the back door. So what we normally do, we take uh, communities as very ignorant, uh, people who are not knowledgeable, and uh, we, we, we almost go to them like uh, you are going to get uh, a free away kind of thing. So one of the things we really need beyond Nairobi, we really need to have systems working throughout the country because land administration and management is about people, it's about places, it's about uh, our policy. So having done digitalization in Nairobi is not sufficient uh, for anybody venturing outside Nairobi in, on assumption that uh, he's just going to do the same kind of thing. I think if we digitalize and transform the, the land system, more or less the, the way the telephones have been transformed from the land lines for the established estate land owners to anybody who can have a mobile phone, the way the banking has been transformed away from this rigidness of the banking flow to somebody now doing the M-Pesa anywhere, anyhow, anytime. That way, I, I think we will avoid a lot of this dispute. But the issue of disputes in land matters is substantive. And even when we are doing all the land reform agenda, one of the last elements we always added is how to deal with disputes. You can never avoid disputes. The only thing that we must make sure that the systems serve all. All right. Um, scholar, if you would uh, quickly, so how can one protect their land from some kind of, you know, adverse possession, be it, a, uh, you know, a, a community or an individual? Well, an adverse possession means that somebody who has no title to land walks into that land, mm -hmm. occupies it openly without the permission of the owner. Mm -hmm. And this goes on for a period that is now uh, prescribed by the law as 12 years. So if somebody without title lives on your land for 12 years, then they have a right to, to claim that land through adverse possession. So of course, for you to, uh, to protect your land from adverse possession, it means you have to be in constant watch to know if somebody has set up a kibanda mm -hmm. over your land and of course to get them out of that land as soon as it's possible. So don't, don't, don't take it uh, you know, kindly if uh, a few people want to squat on their land. Thank you. Know, you. There's a reason why you're required to fence your land at, at least make an active act of occupation of that land. Mm -hmm. Do not leave it idle, do not leave strangers to live on your land for whatever reason, mm -hmm. because that means they may be acquiring title to your property over time. 
Yes. All right. Let's take a look at uh, some of the questions you're sending in to us. Here we go. Um, oh, this one on basically unrealistic land values and prices, uh, making it difficult for investors to invest in Kenya. What are you doing to improve on this issue? Is the price, is the land price index in your plans? Also comment on land compensation. Okay, so let's start with uh, those unrealistic prices. Are, are they driving people away, Mwanda? Well, yes, 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 they are because what we have is an ab abnormal market. If we had good regulation and we had our systems uh, 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 fighting uh, speculation, not involving speculation, then one would project the prices and uh, demand and supply would be more balanced. So uh, what I think is that we service more land so that people are not competing for the small area that Paul talked about. So we service with infrastructure and we make land more useful, I mean, arable and more um, uh, uh, good, uh, better for development. Mm -hmm. Then we can ease off the competition in the towns, mm -hmm. the prices will come down. And uh, then the matter of composition. Um, compulsory is, is for compulsory acquisition when you're doing infrastructure. What I think uh, is important there is fairness and that people do not, um, officials do not, uh, again use speculation and corruption to to inflate the prices so that uh, the markets are not realistic and infrastructure development becomes very 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 expensive land index uh, uh, will not regulate this is a capitalistic economy mm. so people factors of supply and demand will operate no one will regulate the prices and say it is over uh, so, but the, the solution to speculation you're saying is to service. have more in infrastructure yes. going out into yes. these more arid areas, so that you can live okay. 50 kilometers or 100 kilometers away, mm -hmm. and in 30 minutes you're in the city center. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, here's another. Uh, let's uh, take a look at it. How much does it cost approximately to get a title deed, and for how long? Someone in the name of a surveyor. <laughs> in the name of charged as 60,000 shillings and promised to make I'm telling you Mwenda has literally said oh my god and <laughs> promised to make it work easier for us but now it's about four months and no progress Paul do you wanna well it, the, 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 it all depends on what sort of title one is talking about if you are talking about getting title to a piece of land which you have bought Mm -hmm. any place mm -hmm. I mean uh, after you have done your the due diligence we talked about mm -hmm. your title should be available in a matter of days mm -hmm. uh, it's about four months now when, you, when you involve a surveyor uh -huh. it means that there is a subdivision and that I think that is the the, the issue that uh, that question is uh, is targeting mm -hmm. there is a subdivision which uh, which is a fairly involved uh, a process because you go to get approvals from the county mm -hmm. you go to get approval from the uh, National Land Commission mm -hmm. and getting from the Land Commission also involves other departments within government like survey planning mm -hmm. and, and land administration and all those could it take about four months I think four months is a bit is, is probably optimistic oh I think it takes much longer than that as I say, if you are looking, and you see, mind you, after you got all these approvals from the various bodies, there is the body that is charged with the responsibility of issuing your title, which is the Ministry of Lands. And the, 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 the bureaucracy within the Ministry of Lands is, 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 is such that you can never be absolutely certain in giving an estimation. Okay, this, uh, the 60K so, part? Sorry, sorry, Anne. Rwanda. Rwanda is... They are, they, are, they are ranking very high in the World Bank uh, business ease of doing business index mm -hmm. because they give their they can you can transfer your property there in three days two days mm -hmm. having done all those processes so I think it is the bureaucracy that is making it costly but the title itself mm -hmm. the charges given for the titles mm -hmm. in fact I remember the minister made it free if it is for the rural areas or where they are giving mm -hmm. the schemes but mm -hmm. title you know is varied as Paul said if you are doing a conveyancing in town mm. where i want us to go into the leases and do all the other uh, drafting 
all the, 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 the transfer documents and all that, then it becomes complex. But okay. in the rural area, simple. I think even surveying, the rates cannot reach 60,000 unless it's a scheme. A simple plot with, with about 10,000, 15,000 uh, from government, you should be able to do it. All right, let's take a final one here from Martin. Hi, Martin. You say your dad gave you a piece of land in Nairobi and you went with him to the land control board and paid and got the transfer consent. Do you need to pay a stamp duty? Well, stamp duty is paid. Uh, sorry, Just stamp duty <laughs> is paid on the transfer deed. Mm -hmm. If you have gone that the process he is explaining there, that's just the beginning. Mm. Yeah. Because you've got to do the transfer itself. Mm. Y it may be necessary now to pay capital gains tax on it, depending on what sort of land is uh, you are talking about. Then you've got to pay the stamp duty through KRA and eventually the registration of that transfer deed. So it's, 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 it's much more involved than uh, what uh, Mr. Chege is talking about. Okay, um, I'm just getting one more question. Unfortunately, we're not able to put it up, but I believe you're saying it is around transferring land for a person uh, who is deceased, somebody who's deceased, so you, you were bequeathed um, something in a will and now land is being transferred. Well, if, if, uh, if that person made a will before he died, mm -hmm. then you've got to go through another process called uh, administration of that estate, which is really to go to court and apply for probate if he made a will or letters of administration if he didn't make a will mm -hmm. and again that is an involved process okay you, you and uh, by the time you get out of the courts with a, a document called probate or letters of administration mm -hmm. you are probably looking at at least a year okay um, now we have so many questions but we are out of time and possibly this is something that we need to come around to with all of you again if you would be as kind as uh, coming back to answer of your questions but for what you've done this evening i'm most grateful that's our time keep your questions coming in we'll make a database of them and uh, endeavor to have uh, the trio back in studio to answer your questions regarding sale and uh, purchase of land but for tonight thanks for watching i'm anki good to have a lovely evening i'll see you thursday they will talk politics then. Bye-bye for now.